Following the Mekong, away from the source, the plateau is framed by Buddhism. There are signs everywhere. Cairns, flags, temples, monasteries, in the mountains, on the plains, beside rivers, everywhere. Oh. On a cold gravel road, a chain of pilgrims make their way towards Lhasa. In a journey that could take up to six months, the pilgrims progress in a long line by flinging themselves down and sliding along the rough road. The Mekong is an essential part of this sacred landscape. People tell us about the Tibetan practice of river burial for babies. That because infants have pure and innocent hearts, they are given to the river, a pure body of water. The upshot is, Tibetans don't eat live fish from the river, and monks will often go to the markets to buy all the fish to release back into the pure Mekong water. <laughs> We visit the site of a Tibetan sky burial. In a tradition stemming from the Buddhism belief in rebirth, bodies of the recently deceased are dissected and then offered to the vultures of the plateau. In contemporary China, this practice is frowned upon and as a result, it is disappearing. At the site we visit, fences have been erected to stop the practice and keep birds away. As one of our final stops before the Mekong leaves the Tibetan Plateau, the closed burial site completes a picture of a culture being systematically extinguished. As a local man tells us, first the government will stop their religion, then their customs, and in the future, everyone will be Chinese. There'll be no Tibetans left. It is hard not to hope that despite all the odds stacked against them, that the enduring devotion of pilgrims and ordinary Tibetans will preserve this faith whose home is a land above the clouds. <laughs> Symbols